So the next part of module 2 will be about the sources of drugs. For the learning outcomes, this presentation aims to identify and describe the different drug sources. It also aims to identify some examples of these drug sources. For the outline of the presentation, the first part will talk about the drugs coming from the animal sources. The next will be the drugs from microbial sources. The next will be the drugs of mineral origin. And we are also going to talk about the different drugs from plant sources. This diagram shows the general classification of the sources of drugs. So generally, we can classify the drug sources into two major groups. Now, the first group are the natural sources, and we also have the synthetic sources. For the natural sources of drugs, now we have uh, drugs can either be of plant origin, animal origin, now it can also be from minerals, microorganisms, as well as from human. For the synthetic sources of drugs, so we have those drugs that are chemically synthesized, and we also have those drugs that are derived by cell culture, recombinant DNA technology, and hybridoma technique. So the branch of pharmacology that, that deals with the study of drugs isolated from natural sources, including plants, microbes, animal tissues, minerals, as well as human, is known as pharmacognosy. The first part of our lesson will talk about the drugs from animal sources. So these are examples. So the first uh, group here are the hormones. So these hormones are not only used in humans, but it, also, it is also used in veterinary medicine. So example of this are oxytocin. So this is derived from the post posterior pituitary gland. We also have insulin, tyroxine, and the gonadotropins. The next are the vitamins. So examples of this are the, uh, the vitamins A and D, which are derived from the cod or the shark liver oil. We also have the antisera. So under this, we have the canine distemper antisera and the snake venom antisera. So when we say antisera or antiserum, this is a blood serum that contains specific antibodies against an infective organism or poisonous substances. Antiserums are produced in animals. So for example, we have horses, sheep, ox, and rabbit, as well as in humans, in response to infection, intoxication, or vaccination, and may be used in another individual to confer immunity to a specific disease or to treat bites or stings of venomous animals. We also have the uh, other examples of drugs from animal sources include heparin, liver extract, immunoglobulins, as well as the blood and the plasma. We also have those drugs that are derived from microbial sources. So under this, we have fungi, actinomycetes, and other bacteria as a source of antibiotics. So example of the antibiotics that are derived from these microbes include penicillin, streptomycin, gentamicin, and others. We also have the viruses. So the viruses and bacteria can be used in the preparation of vaccines. Another is the dried yeast. So the dried yeast is an important source of the B-complex vitamins. So the B-complex vitamins in brewer's yeast may include the vitamin B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, as well as the vitamin B9. We also have those drugs from mineral origin. So an example of uh, these are inorganic salts that are used in the treatment or prevention of disease states. So our first example here is magnesium oxide. So magnesium oxide can be used as an antacid. It may be used uh, as an antacid to relieve heartburn, uh, sour stomach, or acid indigestion. 
We also have potassium iodide. So potassium iodide can be used as an expectorant to thin mucus and loosen congestion in the chest and the throat. We also have ferrosulfate. So ferrosulfate is an iron supplement. It can be used to treat or prevent low blood levels of iron, such as those caused by anemia or pregnancy. Uh, ferrosulfate can also be is, is a hematinic. So when we say hematinic, that is uh, a substance that are essential to the proper formation of the components of the blood. Another inorganic salt is the magnesium, uh, magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate can be used as a laxative to relieve occasional constipation. And we also have the potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate can be used as a diuretic in pigs, cattle, and horses. A diuretic is any substance that promotes diuresis or the increased production of urine. We also have a group of drugs that are derived from plants. So many drugs available from plants are used even today in the treatment of pathological conditions. The ancient or original sources of drugs are the plants collectively called as medicinal plants. So all parts of the medicinal plants, such as the root, the rhizome, the tubers, the stem, the bark, the flowers, the fruits, and the seeds may have therapeutic values. So example of uh, medicinal plants wherein its medicinal value is derived from its roots include the belladonna or the atropa belladonna plant. We also have the sarpaganda or the raufia serpentina or the sarpaganda plant. So the medicinal value of this plant now can be derived from its roots. We also have those uh, medicinal plants wherein the medicinal value comes from its rhizome. So of course we have here an example, you know, the ginger. So other medicinal plants have medicinal value that are derived from its bark. So example of these are the acacia. Acacia pantheosa. And these are some of the medicinal, uh, the summary you know, of the main medicinal properties of the Acacia pantheosa. We also have the another is the Acacia catechu extract. So this is another example of a medicinal plant wherein its medicinal value comes from its bark. We also have those uh, medicinal plants wherein its medicinal value or medicinal properties comes from its leaves. So example of these are the belladonna plant that is a source of atropine. We also have the coca plant that is a source of cocaine and the calabar bean or the physostigma venenosum which is the source of physostigmine. Another are those medicinal plants wherein its medicinal properties comes from its flowers. We also we have here, under this we have the common fox glove, which is the source of uh, the digitalis. This uh, plant is also known scientifically as digitalis purpurea. We also have hibiscus or the hibiscus rosa sinensis and the chrysanthemum. So the medicinal pro properties of these plants are derived mainly from its uh, flowers. We also have those uh, medicinal plants wherein its medicinal properties comes from its uh, fruits. We have here example are the anise and the papaya. Another group are the medicinal plants wherein its medicinal properties mainly comes from its seeds. So example of these are the Nox vomica, Strychnos Nox vomica L. 
So the first uh, part here is the whole plant, Nox vomica. The number two here is the, the fruit of the Nox vomica and this is the seeds of the Nox vomica. We also have those uh, medicinal plants wherein its medicinal properties are derived from its secretions. So example of this are the opium. Uh, opium is a dried latex obtained from the seed capsule of the opium poppy, scientifically known as Papaver somniferum. Approximately 12% of opium is made up of the analgesic alkaloid morphine. We also have the aloe vera, aloe vera plant. So this is another medicinal plant with its medicinal property coming from its secretion. So the pharmacological activities of plants are attributed to certain active principles in the plants. So they, they include alkaloids, glycosides, fats, oils, tannins, saponins, and others. An alkaloid is strictly speaking an amine that is produced by a plant. However, the term has been extended to amines produced by plants and animals for defense. The name derives from the word alkaline. Originally, the term was used to describe any nitro nitrogen containing base. Alkaloids are usually derivatives of amino acids and many have bitter taste. They are found as secondary metabolites in plants, animals, and fungi, and in many cases, they can be purified from crude extracts by acid extraction. The following slides will show some examples of alkaloids in plants, their sources, and their uses. The first example is morphine. So morphine is an alkaloid derived from the plant uh, Papaver somniferum or the opium poppy. The morphine is known as an analgesic, meaning that it is used to uh, to relieve pain. Another important alkaloid is atropine. Atropine is derived from the plant Hyosayamus niger, commonly known as the stinking nightshade. For its effects and uses, it can be used for the prevention of intestinal spasms as well as an antidote to other poisons. Another alkaloid is the vinblastine. Vinblastin is derived from the flowering plant Cataranthus roseus, which is uh, commonly known in Filipino as Chichirica. Its uses uh, include uh, it has a property, you know, an anti cancer property. Another is the alkaloid codeine. So, codeine is an alkaloid derived from the Opium poppy, Papaver somniferum, which is also a source of morphine. So for its uses, it can be used as an analgesic or a pain reliever, as well as an anti So when we say anti that is a drug that is used to prevent or relieve a cough. Another important alkaloid is the caffeine. Caffeine is derived from the plant Coffea arabica. It is used as a stimulant and as a natural pesticide. When we say stimulant, uh, stimulants are a class of drugs that speed up messages traveling between the brain and the body. So they can make a person feel more awake, alert, confident, or energetic. Stimulants uh, does not only include caffeine, no, but, but it can also include nicotine, amphetamines, as well as Okay. Another alkaloid is nicotine. This is derived from the plant Nicotiana tabacum. Uh, it can be used as a stimulant as well as a tranquilizer. So a tranquilizer is a drug or a tranquilizer refers to a drug no? which is designed for the treatment of anxiety, fear, tension, agitation, and disturbances of the mind specifically to reduce states of anxiety and tension. So 
So another plant that is an important source of alkaloid is the belladonna or the uh, deadly nightshade. So belladonna is a toxic plant associated with the production of the so-called belladonna alkaloids, most of which are quite toxic and some of which have clinically a clinical utility at lower doses. So deadly nightshade produces mostly atropine. It is a medicinal plant and main commercial source of tropane alkaloids, including scopolamine and uh, hyoscyamine, which are anticholinergic drugs widely used clinically. Another alkaloid is the cocaine. Cocaine is derived from the coca plant, erythroxylon coca, and it is used as a stimulant of the CNS and as a local anesthetic. For the properties of the alkaloids, so alkaloids containing oxygen are solid and comparatively non-volatile. So example of this uh, are cocaine. While those that do not contain oxygen in its chemical structure are liquids and volatile. Example of these are nicotine. So this is cocaine. It is solid. It contains oxygen in its chemical structure. We have here uh, nicotine. So this is the chemical structure of nicotine. It is liquid because it does not contain oxygen in its chemical structure. Another property, so alkaloids are insoluble in water while their salts such as atropine sulfate, caffeine citrate are considered to be soluble in water. They have a bitter taste. Alkaloids represent the waste products of plant metabolism and their names end with INE. So they should be administered in small quantities. Another natural compound from plants that have an important pharmacological property are the glycosides. So glycosides are, are defined as non-nitrogenous substances obtained from plants and some animals. In terms of its chemical structure, the glycosides can be defined as the combination of the sugar with other organic structures. The glycosides are compounds which upon hydrolysis give rise to a sugar part. This is also known as the glycon, formed of one or more sugar units, and a non-sugar part, the aglycon, which is also known as the genin. So we have here uh, an example of a glycoside. So as you can see here, it has uh, two main components. Now we have here the, the sugar component, the sugar part, which is also known as the glycon. And we also have here the non-sugar part, also known as the aglycone or the genin. When the sugar molecule here is glucose, this glycoside can be known as a glucoside. The sugar helps in the dissolution of the preparation while the pharmacological action rests in the aglycone part of the glycoside molecule. We also have here another uh, example of a glycoside. So this is the structural characteristics of a cardiac glycoside. So as you can see here, the uh, cardiac glycoside has three main components. Now we have here the sugar part, the sugar moiety, or the glycone, glycone part. We also have here the non-sugar part, or the aglycone, also known as the genin part. We also have, for the uh, cardiac glycosides, we also have the lactone moiety. So we have here an exam, uh, a clip of a slide presented by Professor Muhammad Hassan, a PhD of pharmacology, showing the chemistry as well as the property of the cardiac glycosides. So in here, we have here the 
uh, chemistry of the cardiac glycosides showing the main components of its steroid nucleus. So the steroid nucleus of the cardiac glycosides are mainly composed of three structures. We have here the lactone moiety, the sugar moiety, and the aglycone or the genin moiety or the genin part. So the steroid nucleus and the lactone ring of the car cardiac glycosides are considered to be essential for its drug activity, while the sugar moiety or the sugar part is important for its pharmacokinetic properties, including its absorption, half-life, and its metabolism. An important source of glycoside is digitalis. So digitalis consists of the dried leaves of digitalis purpurea or the purple foxglove. So the digitalis is used to treat congestive heart failure and rhythm problems or atrial arrhythmias.